I'm Kathleen Leonard, and I actually grew up in the Bay Area, but I've been in Eugene area ever since 1975. So, and I'm 61 now, so pretty much from Eugene. And the very first fair, actually, when I first came to the area, I lived in Walton, which is right down the road from the country fair site. And that was how I first learned about the country fair. And it was 1976, and I was pregnant with my first child, my son, and, um, and he grew up at the fair, and now his kids are growing up at the fair. And um, so yeah, I lived in Walton, and I lived with um, my brother and his wife and two kids and my husband and a real good friend of mine and we all lived out there in Walton together and we were like oh something's going on over there let's check it out and so we came in and they back then they just said oh if you want to have a booth just pick a spot and build a booth and so we did and we it was actually right over across from the child care and we had a tree house and everything and we all sold different things I sold macrame curtains <laughs> and my my brother sold these little kids cedar rocking chairs and uh, my other my friend was selling quilts and my sister-in-law was selling these jute backpacks <laughs> so we were selling all these little things and we had a great time then the next year my brother moved away and I often think if I realized how hard it was going to get to be to have a booth. I would have hung on to that booth, but I just didn't think it was that big a deal. And so the next year I actually worked in the community village. And as I recall, it was the first year of the little people booth and I kind of helped get that going. And my son was little and, and then I worked there. I worked in different places in the community village when my kids were little, which was a great place because they could just run around in there. And cause I did the little people booth and I did an, an ecology booth one year and I did uh, the Kutzen here, a marimba center booth one year, just different things, different years around there. Yeah, and then I realized you could actually get paid with food vouchers. So I got on a security crew and um, the first security crew I worked on was at the front gate. And that was a little intense for me. So then I got on a different security crew, which was um, right here in the far side, at the, at the bridge to the far side. I always would work, you know, and that was a lot less intense, just like making sure people didn't come back here that didn't have camping passes. and. Um, so yeah, here we are in my campsite in the in the far side, and um, and so then I'm actually a piano tuner, and then my last probably about five years before I got to be an elder, I tuned the piano on the Shady Grove stage. So that was my history of jobs at the fair, and um, yeah, it's just fun to me to. I often talk to my grandkids about, oh yeah, we used to have pony rides, you know, and there was a dog pound, and just the way things have changed over time. And I, I remember when there was no electricity at all. It was just, at night, people just had candles and bonfires, and it was kind of just getting used to, wow, you know, there's electricity, you know, the battery-operated lights, they're pretty, but it was just... It seemed like at the beginning we were more into being really natural, you know. Mm -hmm. I remember when cell phones came out, there was actually like, maybe we don't want cell phones at the fair, although they sure are handy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I remember when we used to all have to, there was a phone booth and you all had to line up at the phone booth and, um, you know, actually I noticed too over here there's like this old rotting bulletin board that we used to have to put like, you know, meet me at Rita's at five or whatever. So yeah, just kind of fun memories that, like that. Well, to me, a lot of the changes I noticed is things are just like, 
fancier and brighter, you know. Like, sure, we used to do face painting, but now it's just almost like the Mardi Gras or something. You know, it's that that's something different. That's yeah. something that really strikes me as different. It just used to be, you know, more bare-breasted women walking around with just plain... <laughs> normal breasts and now usually they're all painted which is I'm not saying any, either way is better but it's just that's what I've noticed it's just a lot more color and paint and you know everything different colored hair and colored faces and colored clothes really bright and just used to be more earthy I guess it used to be a lot more earthy not that it isn't still earthy compared to the rest of the world but not as earthy as it used to be um, so that's, for some reason, the main thing I've noticed as changes, but I'm sure there's been a lot of other changes. Um, oh, just little things like the, when I used to work on security, especially front gate, there was this intense thing about all that money that was in there. And now, you know, there's no money at all. It's all done beforehand. Oh, and they didn't used to have the buses. And there used to just be this line of cars all the way back to Eugene, practically. And so that was a really good change with the buses. And, um, oh, oh, yeah, and the passes, they used to be paper. And we all used to go to the button booth and get our butt pa passes made into buttons. And But they were a lot easier to pass around. So now we have the, the wristbands. Um, hmm, what else? Some things have stayed the same, you know, some of the food booths, Patty's Pies and <laughs> Rita's Burritos, and a lot of the booths, but I um, can't really think of, you know, it's just gotten bigger. Uh, yeah, and the garbage situation has definitely gotten better. One year, I don't know quite how long ago it was, but I think it was at least 10 years, probably about 10 years ago, it feels like. But my son and I, he was probably about 20, he was, you know, about 20 at the time. And it was a Wednesday night, and we had just got our camp set up, and we were walking down the path, just strolling along, and we heard right next to us this cracking noise, and this big, huge tree, it was just rotten, and it just fell right on top there was all these people in all these booths and so that was just we were like oh my god you know but the thing that was so awesome about that was within like two seconds white bird was there white bird i mean it just showed me how together this fair is white bird was there you know because we were all like what do we do what do we do and it was like we just get out of the way and let them do you know right. and they just went in there took care of, the, and it turned out, I think, one person broke an arm and one person actually had to go to the hospital or something. But nobody really, no, that was two people, I believe, that got hurt, but White Bird was just on it. I thought that was so awesome. And then all, there was three booths, I believe, that got destroyed. And that was the other thing I thought that was cool, because it was Wednesday evening. And by the time Friday morning came, those booths were rebuilt, like all the whole community just pitched in and, you know, got those smashed booths rebuilt. And so it was really, you know, like um, traumatic at the moment and sad for the people that got hurt, but it was really cool to see how together the fair is and just making sure everything's taken care of. and. Um, so that was one story, um, and just personally, I think one of the really fairs that sticks out in my mind was my son and my daughter both had babies about um, a couple months apart. They're both like six now. This one here, she's 12. She's the original cutie. <laughs> And uh, so, um, <laughs> say hi, Trisha. <laughs> so, um, but they, they were, let's see, they were born, they were both about two or three months old. And so the, it was just neat. My son and my daughter and all my grandkids were there and they were just little babies. And it was just meant so much to me, you know, I was like, oh, it was just, the, just having the babies here and we were all passing them around and everybody just had such a good time. It was really sweet. Very sweet. So yeah, but it's it's just been a very big part of my life, something I always look forward to, like 
when you drive in and they say welcome home and just get a little lump in my throat. <laughs> you know? but yeah. yeah, I love it. And uh, yeah, so it's just really sometimes I feel like it's just how I wish the whole world was. You know? You know, even when I was on security, you know, the training was just so sweet just about how to approach people, you know, with love and with, with compassion and, you know, it's not this confrontational thing. It's just about meeting people where they are and you just learn so much here about, um, especially when you're on cruise and stuff, about how work e how you work together with people and just accepting everybody for who they are. And, just a great place where everybody can just be who they are. Actually, I have kind of a radical vision for the future. I've kind of been wrote a couple letters, you know, about the archaeology booth that I think actually, you know, what my real vision for the future is. I would like to see us give this land back to the Kalapuya people, even though there's not very many of them left, you know. I just really have this thing about how all this land was taken. It was taken, it was stolen. And um, I know it's not something that could happen overnight, but I, I you know, and I, I think we could still have our fair, I'm sure. So I do. That's my vision for the, for the future. And just, uh, you know, otherwise just keep taking good care of the land and keep this no garbage thing getting better every year. And, uh, yeah, I think a big part of the fair to me is about just loving this planet Earth, and I think we all need to remember that. You know, it's a great party, but that, that's something else important that's behind it. So. Yeah. But I, yeah, I have noticed that the archaeology booth, it used to be, uh, that was, it used to be where like, well, they lived here a long time ago, but we're here now and we really respect the memory. And I remember I wrote this letter saying, you know, they're still here. <laughs> and I've gone over there and now they do have like a native, you know, a, a, a indigenous person there, you know, at the booth. So that's something. And yeah, so that's just something as an elder I've been kind of. Because I also think that as an elder it doesn't mean you just get to, well you can't, you know, just relax. And, although I did think it was really cool as, as far as how the world should be when I became an, actually my first year as an elder was the year my ba the babies were there. And it was like great because they could go work while I could take care of the grandkids. And so that's a really nice thing about being an elder. Mm. But also I think it's nice to you know, that's kind of my thing. I'm, even though I get busy and don't spend a whole bunch of time on it, that's kind of my thing. I want to kind of keep a little hand in to see about if we can think about the people who originally, even though my understanding is they didn't really live here, it was more like a summer place. Mm -hmm. But still, it was stolen. So, <laughs> originally, although, you know, the people that. We didn't personally steal it, but it was. Peace, love. <laughs> love the earth, love each other. Yeah. Glad to be here. Love it. Thank you.